What's up everyone, it's your boy Norm Rad 89 here, bringing you another video, and for today's video, we're going to be talking about some of my favorite comfort movies that I love to watch, and a friend of mine, Mike, actually gave me an idea of probably doing this in multiple parts, so today I'm just going to bring you probably like five or six films, and then we'll do a part two, and possibly a part three, like I said, these are comfort films, these are the kind of movies that you can watch at any time, be it you're happy, upset, sad, hurt, sick, whatever, like whatever's going on. These are the films that just warm your heart. So today we're gonna to talk about my some of my favorites. So let's do it. Roll it. So those who are familiar with the channel, you know me. And if you're new to the channel, then let's just get these ones right out of the way. Like pretty much any Jason film, Friday the 13th, like anyone is gonna cheer me up. That's my favorite franchise. So any one of those is a prime example of a comfort film. But my two top ones, if I was to pick out two, just right off the bat, would be Friday the 13th Part 6 and Part 3 are the ones that I return to the most and the ones that I, like said, are those comfort films that like I love to digest. And another one, let's go right on and keep on with the list, is Idle Hands starring Devin Sawa, Jessica Alba, Seth Green. Man, this is one of those 90s. I believe this was 1999 horror comedy. It's completely silly, ridiculous. The, the band Offspring is in this movie too as well, but it's got a fantastic soundtrack, a great cast. The gore effects are hilarious and it has a lot of tropes in it and it just knows what it's doing. You know what I mean? Good meta humor. So Idle Hands is a heavy, heavy rewatch in my home. Keeping in with the horror comedy theme, we're going to move on to Zombievers and this is a 2014 horror comedy and this is another one that is completely B-movie ridiculous, like I'm talking hand puppet, zombie beavers, and like just nudity all, all across the board, foul language, like it's a short watch, but it's a one that just, I laugh my ass off, like it has a freaking hilarious theme song, just the intro to the movie, the first like five minutes of the movie, just once I saw it, it capped off and I was like, damn, I'm gonna love this. And it was one of those movies that every time I rewatch it, I just love it more and more. The comedy of the jokes land for me. So Zombievers is one that I highly recommend because it's just so, it's the definition of schlocky B-movie fun. Next up, we have George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead and the zombie subgenre is one of my favorites. And Night of the Living Dead is, that perfect example of a black and white film that I love to put on at like 11 or 12 o'clock at night and just watch it and like down some popcorn and just enjoy the visuals, that intense story, like the acting, like yeah, Night of the Living Dead is a key one for me. And so for like that one, it's not my favorite zombie film, but it's the one that just makes me feel like I want to snuggle up with a blanket, grab some popcorn and my favorite drink and sit down on the couch. Like that's why it's in this comfort movie list because Night of the Living Dead, just every time I return to it, it feels like home. And, and part of that really has to go with nostalgia because it is the first black and white movie that I ever saw, that I ever watched as a child was Night of the Living Dead. So that's a heavy reason why it sits here on this comfortable movies list. Now we'll slide over to some non-horror stuff and now we're gonna go into Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. This is directed by Edgar Wright and probably his most underrated film, I would say, because Scott Pilgrim vs. The World completely flopped at the box office, but I'm not gonna lie to you, this is easy like a 9 or a 10 out of 10 film. This movie is freaking awesome. We have, you know, Michael Sarah in here, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Jason Schwartzman, Aubrey Plaza. There's a cast of plenty in here and it's so stylish. It's one of those kind of comic book like graphic novel type movies that they really nailed down the style. They were able to bring to life, you know, the game, the graphic novel and really put it on screen and it and it flows, it feels good, you know? It was kind of an early template for Across the Spider-Verse or Into the Spider-Verse. It's a very early template for that style, you know what I mean? And oh man, the jokes in here are great and like the acting, fantastic. And like I said, the cast, the style, the cinematography, yeah, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Add to that, the soundtrack is banger. It's one of those soundtracks that like every track you could just listen to. It's a, it's one of those soundtracks that you don't want to skip any. I really do enjoy it. So Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. If you haven't checked this out yet or you're hesitant, you really need to go check out this movie. This is probably the number one movie on this list I would say you have to check out. If you haven't seen it, go run out and watch this film. Now we're going to bring it home with the last place one. And this, like I said, this is gonna, we're going to do a part two. But for right now, this is going to be the last one we're going to talk about. And it's 
Home Alone, and yes, in my house, it isn't Christmas time until Kevin McAllister gets left at Home Alone. It's like, for real, this is one of those films that, as a kid, I had the VHS with the clamshell box, you know what I mean? I rewatched it over and over. There was that time for like three week period that I just got like over and over obsessed with this film, coming home from school, rewatching it every day. And like I said, every time during that Christmas season, I have to watch this film. And I watch Home Alone 1 and Home Alone 2 probably like two times during that December season, like each twice guaranteed, once by myself and probably once with the whole family. And I might even have it on a third time, like while I'm cooking on Christmas Eve day or something like that. So yeah, Home Alone is one of those films that it's a heavy return to. I just love it. You know, Macaulay Culkin, like at that time, you know, Catherine O'Hara, like the, you know, Joe Pesci, like, oh, it's just, it, there's so much to love about this film. It's wholesome. It's comedy. It's a family film. Like, that's what I love about it. And it's got so many fantastic one-liners and quotes. Like, man, like, the pizza delivery sequence is probably one of my favorites. Like, there's just so much to love about this film. And, yeah, Home Alone is one for me. Like, and my son just started really getting into this kind of, these kind of movies. He likes, you know, Beetlejuice and Home Alone and stuff like that. So I'm really kind of diving into those movies with him. And yeah, he likes when, you know, Kevin's going off the wall and hurting these dudes and they're slipping on little micro machines and he's throwing paint cans at them. Like he's always just laughing his ass off because these dudes are getting hurt. So yeah, this is one that, like I said, is near, dear, close to my heart. All these films, like I said, these select films right here are some of the best for me when I'm sad, you know, happy, angry, any time of day. Any time of mood, I can pop these on, grab a drink, sit down, and just enjoy them, and they're going to cheer me up. But these are just my thoughts, my opinions, and my films, and my list. And that's what's cool about having talking about these comfort films and this new series that I kind of wanted to dive into was that everybody has different comfort films. Everybody out there has different ones that they love and they would like to talk about. So hit me up in the comments section so we can discuss some of your favorite comfort films. I would love to hear from all of you. And be sure to like, subscribe, and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime I post a video and also, <clears throat> excuse me, frog in the throat. Also pretty soon, I'm gonna be on Mike from DigiZ That's channel for another live stream on Z Talk. So make sure you check that out. And also Angel from the Voices from Mausoleum Podcast. We are gonna be doing a live stream for the Conjuring franchise, discussing the films and ranking them and stuff like that. And that will be on Saturday, which is they believe the 15th. So yes, be sure to swing over to those channels. I'll have the links in the description as well. But most importantly, I want y'all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.